Well, hello, I'm Maurice Barrett, and I'm excited because I'm starting a new series. This series is called Parables of the Kingdom. We all pray the Lord's Prayer, Thy Kingdom Come. But Christians don't really expect it to come. They think it's already here. They think the church is the kingdom. But Jesus is coming to set up his kingdom on earth. And those who are faithful will reign with him. So I think it's, it's prophetic and it's important that I preach about the parables of the kingdom because the church don't understand it. They're mysteries of the kingdom. And Jesus is coming soon to set up his kingdom and the church are not ready. So I'm hoping this will give you some insight. This is a short study. Uh, it's just an introduction. And maybe it's a, a strange title because the occult use this. Hidden in plain sight. I went to Sunday school like many of you. And uh, I knew the definition of a parable because they told me. And in school in our scripture lessons they also told us a definition of a parable and they said it was an earthly story with a heavenly meaning maybe you've heard that but i had that at school it god jesus told stories earthly stories uh, so they could understand the heavenly meaning in other words so that hard sayings would be made easy with simple illustrations let me say that again that means that hard sayings will be made easy because of the simple illustrations. Well, I believed that for 35 years, but it was a lie. Until I read for myself what Jesus said about his parables, and it's just the opposite. Just the opposite. Jesus told parables to hide the truth from those who did not want to know it. And he told his disciples he'd interpret it to them and give them the keys to the rest of the parables. I'm going to first look at the parables. I don't know how many studies there'll be. That There'll probably be, I don't know, I had 70 that I preached on just in TV. But I'm starting with the seven parables in Matthew 13. And the first two parables are the key to parables of the kingdom. So to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the lawyers, Jesus was going to hide the real mysteries because they'd close their ears to the truth. Let's just read it. Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 to 17. And Jesus tells us why he told parables. So why we've got that Sunday school definition, I don't know. But that's typical of the church. They have their own interpretation, their own doctrines. And it's not many are not based on the Bible. And the disciples came unto him, this is verse 10. Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. So the parables are to reveal the mysteries of the kingdom of God to those who have ears to hear. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundant. The more you understand the mysteries, the more you'll understand the mysteries. You've got to start understanding the secrets of the kingdom of God. If you don't start, you'll get nothing. But when you start to get them, it opens up and there's levels of, of understanding. But whoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. In other words, you'll be blinder and blinder and blinder like the Pharisees. You know, when God speaks, you either get revelation or blindness. Revelation is sight. It reveals it to you. So you get light or you get darkness. It's a double-edged sword. The dead letter kills, the spirit gives life. So when you hear the word about the kingdom, if you don't get revelation on it, then you get darkness, you get blindness. It's very serious. When you preach, you're either preaching life or death. Even if you're anointed, it's death to those who don't want to hear. It's death to the Pharisees and life to the real ones. Whoever hath not, from his shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because they see and see not. 
They hear and hear. So they hear with the physical ears, but the spiritual ears are deaf. They see with the spiritual eyes, they see you preaching, but their spiritual eyes are blind. And they don't understand with the heart. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. So it's already prophesied. Isaiah, that's Isaiah, which said, By hearing ye shall hear and not understand. So God prophesied that they would hear and not understand in Isaiah to his own people. And you'll see, but you'll not perceive, you'll have no revelation. Jesus, God prophesied to Israel because they were backslidden. And he says, you'll hear the message, the message will be clear, but you won't understand it. And you'll see it, but you won't perceive it. For this people's hearts wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Why? Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their eyes, should understand with their hearts, and should be converted. He hides it so they won't be converted. Let me say that again. God hides the truth from those who don't want him so they won't be converted. Think about it. If the people in your street knew about the pleasures forevermore in heaven, absolute freedom, no more tears, no more pain, no more unhappiness, no more stress, no more burdens, they'd say, God, save me. They'd sell the house to get eternal life. If you knocked on the door and says, I can tell you how to have eternal life, they'd say, how much? People would sell the house and mortgage it, they'd sell the car, if they could live forever. But they don't believe you. Oh, pie in the sky nonsense. They do, they're blind as bats. And if they knew the terrors of the lake of fire, they'd say, God save me. But they're blind. Who's blinded them? God, through the God of this world, because they don't want the truth. If you don't want the truth, God will blind you. And he prophesied. He said, lest you should be converted and I should heal them, restore them. I can't restore them because they don't want me. They worship me with their mouth, but their heart's far from me. Many of the, much of the church are blind because they worship God. They really praise God, and it's the real God they're praising. But the heart's far from him. The heart's in the world. And so they're blind. They don't know. But blessed are your eyes. This is disciples. Those who've started to go through the narrow gate, the restricted lifestyle. But blessed are your eyes. They see. And your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets, listen to this, many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see. They couldn't see it under the old covenant. And have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear, they've not heard them. Do you know the prophets, they wondered what they were prophesying about. They longed to know the mysteries of the kingdom. They didn't know the mysteries. Nobody in the Old Testament knew the mysteries of the kingdom. They prophesied, but they didn't know what they were talking about. Many prophets and righteous people, so these are the good people, they didn't know. But it's revealed to us who are babes in Christ. Don't you think that's amazing? Well, Jesus was always trying to reveal the mysteries to his disciples. You know, Paul did the same. I've got a lot of scriptures about mysteries. Because a parable is a mystery. Let me read some scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. So Paul's not saying, oh, it's a mystery. He says, I'll explain the mystery. I'll show you a mystery. I'll reveal it. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. They didn't know that under the old covenant. Romans eleven twenty five. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. He's explaining the mystery. I don't want you to be of this mystery. What was a mystery? Unless you'd be wise in your own conceits. This is the mystery that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles is come in. We're near the end of the fullness of the Gentiles. It's getting near the end of the Gentiles and the kingdom will move back to Israel. God's going to restore the kingdom to Israel, not the church. God, Jesus isn't king of the church. He's the king of Israel. He's our saviour, our lord, our master, our lover, our husband. But he's the king of Israel. So he said, I don't want you to be deceived that blindness has happened to Israel only until the Gentiles' time's finished. 
and then he'll restore the kingdom to Israel. Israel didn't know that. They thought Jesus, when he came the first time, would restore the kingdom to Israel. I'll have to be careful or I'll preach on every scripture. Let me just go through them as a lot. Romans 16, 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation, the revealing of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. God already knew about the church and the kingdom before he created Adam and Eve, but it's only been revealed in this age of the Gentiles. That's amazing, isn't it? That's what the parables are about. The parables are not revealed in the Old Testament, they're in the new one. And we miss them at our peril. It's fundamental that the church understand in these last days. 1 Corinthians 2, 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. There's another scripture that shows that God already planned the kingdom but he said it's going to be a mystery until the time of the Gentiles. 1 Corinthians 4.1 Let no man account of us as the ministers of Christ, as, as of the ministers of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. I'm a steward of the mysteries of God. I hope every preacher is a steward to reveal the mysteries of God to the church. Why don't preachers preach about these mysteries? that Paul talks about. He said, we're stewards of these mysteries. Of course, if you don't know the mystery, you can't reveal it. You need to know the mystery. Ephesians 1.9 Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which is purposed in himself. The mystery of his will, it's not a mystery anymore, or it shouldn't be. Ephesians 3, verse 3 and 4. Paul says, how that by revelation, it's by revelation, the mysteries by revelation. It's going to Bible college won't reveal the mysteries. It, this, my studies are not theological. I'm going to let the Bible explain the Bible, the mysteries. How that by revelation is made known unto me the mysteries, as I wrote before in a few words. Whereby, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Ephesians 3, 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery from which the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things in Jesus Christ. Are you getting the message? I bet you didn't realise there's so many scriptures about these mysteries that was hid from the foundation of the world. Ephesians 5, 32. I'm only halfway through. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. They didn't know that in the Old Testament. He's talking about a man and a woman. For this cause, a man will leave his father and mother, cleave to his wife, and they become one flesh. He said, that's amazing, that the way of a man with a maid. He said, it's a great mystery. But I'm not talking about marriage and sex. I'm talking about Christ and the church. When Adam and Eve were formed and God said, for this cause, a man will leave his mother and father, cleave to his wife, and become one flesh. He was prophesying Christ and the church, but they didn't understand it. It's not a mystery to me anymore. Did, did God not leave and cleave? Did Jesus not leave and Did he not leave his father? Why have you forsaken me? Will he not cleave to his wife through, through eternity? It's a prophecy. It's a mystery. No more. So Paul's telling us it's a mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. That's what the mystery is about, of marriage and sex. It's about Christ and the church, not physical marriage. I'm preaching again. Ephesians 6, 19. I can't help it. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to do what? To make known the mystery of the gospel. The gospel's a mystery. Try preaching, try knocking on some doors and telling them about the gospel. It's a mystery. You may as well tell them Ads, Ads and some fairy tales or Alice in Wonderland. That there's a, it's just fables to them. Colossians 1, 26 and 27. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages, from generation, but now is made manifest to his saints. It's revealed to us, you should know the mysteries, I should know the mysteries. They're all in the Bible, in the New Testament. Colossians 2.2 2. 
Oh, sorry, the next verse. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery amongst the Gentiles. What's the mystery amongst the Gentiles? It tells us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. In the Old Testament, Christ was with them. He was the rock that followed them in the wilderness. But now he's in you. He said that's the mystery of the Gentiles, that the Gentiles, we can have Christ in us, not with us. Christians don't realise that. They say, oh God, will you go with me? Now the mystery is God's in us. Holy Ghost will welcome you. You're supposed to carry the Holy Ghost. He's a temple of the Holy Ghost. Why would you invite him if you carry him? Come to church and let him out. Colossians 2.2 2. That their hearts may be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father, and of Christ. God, Father, and Christ. Why say God and Father and Christ? Because God is the Father. But there's, he said, but to the full assurance. All right, Colossians 4, 3. With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance, what for? To speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. I'm in bonds because I reveal the mystery of Christ. 1 Timothy 3.16 And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. But he explains, you know, I'll give you a tip. Whenever you read mystery in the epistles, read on because it explains the mystery. It's not a mystery. It's not saying, oh, it's a mystery. He said, this is a great mystery. Then he tells you what the mystery is. It's no longer a mystery. This is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up to the glory. That's the mystery of godliness. It explains it. That's a wonderful gospel sermon. One Timothy, Revelation one twenty. I'm coming to the end. And the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in thy right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. He tells you, it shouldn't be a mystery. Some things in Revelation maybe you won't understand, but he tells you what this is. He says the seven stars are the seven angels of the seven churches. That, that's, not, that's not a parable, that's factual, that's literal. Because it's explained in the The mystery is spiritual, but the explanation is literal. And the seven candles which you saw, they're the seven churches. That's pretty plain. And Revelation 17, 7. <coughs> and the angel said unto me, Why do you marvel? I'll tell you the mystery of the woman. I'll explain the mystery so it shouldn't be a mystery. The woman shouldn't be a mystery. He said, I'll tell you. And of the beast that carried her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. Well, Revelation 17, 17, you realise I've come to the end, but isn't that amazing, all that these, that these scriptures about the mysteries? Did you notice that all the scriptures, apart from those in Revelation, which is Jesus talking, but all the, the, the letters to the churches, Romans, Corinthians, Ephesians, Colossians, Timothy, were all from Paul. Peter doesn't mention the mysteries. James doesn't mention the mysteries. John doesn't mention the mysteries. And I thought about that and I realised Paul is an apostle to the Gentiles. Those who accept Christ, the mysteries are revealed. But under the old covenant, Peter was an apostle to the Jews. Until they accept Jesus, they can't know the mysteries. So he didn't reveal the mysteries because he's preaching to the Jews. Just something for you to think about. 2 Corinthians 3.14 This is just to substantiate what I've said. It's talking about Israel. But their minds were blinded for until this day. Now that's after Jesus died. Paul's talking, you know, a good few years after Jesus died, writing a letter. So he said, they're blinded until this day remained at the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. When you accept Christ as a, a, an Israeli, then the veil is done away with, and now you can understand the mysteries of the kingdom. They, they only know about the kingdom of Israel, and God will restore it. They don't know the mysteries that we know. All right, so you don't need to be confused with mysteries anymore. 
In fact, if you're a Christian, if anything's a mystery to you, then it's in proportion to your blindness and deafness. Let me say that again. The mysteries are now revealed to us. So if you say, well, it's a mystery to me, and, and some things are still a mystery to me, so I expect that you don't understand everything in the Bible, but it's in proportion to my deafness and blindness because this is the Word of God. Everything's in here, and if I don't understand it, it's because I've got a little bit of blindness. And better I accept that and say, Lord, I don't understand that. Open my eyes that I can know the mystery. But accept that the mysteries are there to be revealed. There's no mysteries, it's all in the Bible. And as you get revelation and understand there's layers of revelation, you'll get more. To much, who he who hath, more will be given. So when Christians tell you things are a mystery, oh, it's a mystery, that doctrine, you just accept it by faith, it might be mystery Babylon. Babylon's a mystery, mystery Babylon. So be careful. When people say, oh, you can't know that, you can't know it. it's a mystery, just accept it by faith. I say, no, I want revelation on that. Babylon is a mystery, mystery Babylon. So, parables, this is the introduction, I'm going to start on the parables next study, the sower. But you know, a proverb is not a parable. Let me explain the difference. Proverbs, we, we've got a whole book of Proverbs, and we've got Aesop's fables and, you know, Proverbs in the modern idiom. But Proverbs are wise statements, and they're put in succinct ways. So an English proverb would be, a stitch in time saves time. Stitch it before it goes big, and, and you'll save time. So a, a Bible proverb, it's my paraphrase, a moaning woman is like a dripping tap. Every man knows that, of course. I think the Bible says that it's better to be in the, the rooftops than in the house with a, a brawling woman. So that, that's, I think mine's a better one, actually. It's lesser, isn't it? But these are they're wise sayings. But they're not spiritual, they're natural. Solomon was very, very wise, but he had natural wisdom. Do you remember when the, the, the two women came to him and said, you know, we both had a baby and one died and they're arguing about the baby. And, and Solomon said, oh, I, I can solve that. Bring me a sword and it will cut the baby in two, have half each, that'll solve it. And the real mother said, no, 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 give it her. She couldn't bear to see her baby dad. Well, any wise man could do that. It's got, it's, we call it calling the bluff. You know, that's natural wisdom. That that's, wasn't supernatural wisdom. There's no miracles involved. It wasn't a word of knowledge. A word of knowledge, supernatural wisdom, we would say, you're the mother. God would reveal it, but God didn't reveal it to Solomon. He just used natural cunning and wisdom, and it, it worked. Daniel had spiritual wisdom. Daniel was wiser than Solomon because he had spiritual wisdom. When the Bible's talking about the king of Tyrus, people believe it's Satan, I don't, but that, that's, that's by the by. Ezekiel said that this uh, anointed cherub had been in the Garden of Eden and was wiser than Daniel. Thou art wiser than Daniel. He didn't say wiser than Solomon, and yet Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived. Nobody was before or after was as wise as Solomon with natural wisdom. But Daniel was wiser because he had supernatural wisdom. And this spiritual being, he said, you're wiser than Daniel. Solomon's earthly wisdom didn't make him righteous. He backslid. He sacrificed his children to demons to please his women. So the world's wisest man became the world's biggest fool. How can a man with all that knowledge, if it was spiritual, he wouldn't have backslid. But he had natural wisdom and it, it made him proud and it made him lustful. He had a thousand women and he indulged in all the pleasures of the world. And he backslid in his old age. But parables are spiritual mysteries. They're not proverbs. Proverbs you understand, the stitching time saves time. You, you can work that out. But a, a parable... It's hidden, I mean, you don't know what it's talking about. It talks about something natural, a sower went to sow, 
But there's a hidden message that you don't know, that's a mystery, and it's hidden in a riddle. A riddle is a mystery. A riddle is a, a parable. A riddle. They tell it you, and you don't understand what it is, but you, you don't know the interpretation. So, a mystery is not something unknowable. People say, oh, it's a mystery, nobody can know it. A mystery is something that's not known to the uninitiated. When you, somebody explains the, the mystery, it's not a mystery anymore. That's in the occult or in God's kingdom. It's only a mystery when you don't know it. When you're in the Masons, you learn the mystic secrets of the Masons. In which you learn the secrets, how to cast spells, how to... It's not a secret anymore. When you know how to cast a spell and curse somebody, it's not a mystery. It's a mystery to me. I don't know how to cast a spell and I don't want to know. But you're initiated into the mysteries. That's why I've put the title for this, Hidden in Plain Sight. You know, Satan is not the opposite to God. It's the counterfeit. The alternative to give us a choice is the other God. You can choose God or you can choose the other God, Satan, the God of this world. It's only the alternative. And it's the counterfeit. It's not the opposite. And he, like, he tries to be like God. So he hides his message in symbolism and in mysteries the mystery schools of the occult. And he uses literature and images and symbols to hide his dark mysteries. And he reveals it to those who want, want him and who pay the price. Most of the classic stories that we read our ch children are mysteries. Shakespeare, it's occult prophecy. Think about it, Merchants of Venice wanted his pound of flesh. Midsummer Night's Dream, they're all dancing naked round at summer solstice. They're all prophecies, they're all hidden meanings. Alice in Wonderland, do you think that's just a, a fairy story, follow the white rabbit? It's basic occult. Alice through the looking glass, pure occult, look in the mirror and go through to the other side. It's all occult. Mary Poppins. I heard the author of Mary Poppins on Radio 4 saying why she wrote. She said, I wrote this story for children, but really it's for grown-ups. It's to educate them to the other side. That things happen, things fly about. It's to introduce... Mary Poppins was written, the book, to introduce people to the occult, to the other side. The supernatural, the paranormal. So you don't only need books like Harry Potter that people say, oh, well, that's occult. Nearly every classic... Hans Anderson... Fairy tales, fairies about fairies. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. They're all about magic and Disney, it's all about magic. It's all the mysteries of, of the kingdom of darkness. There's two kingdoms. We're talking about the mysteries of the kingdom of light, but the devil has the kingdom of darkness and Disney is the main exponent of the, the mysteries of the kingdom. They call it the kingdom, don't they? The magic kingdom, that's telling the kids about the mysteries, but it's in symbolism. The Masonic symbols are a mystery to most people. You know, the square and the compass, and, and there's loads and loads of pillars and, you know, the temple and that. It's a mystery to most people. But to those who have had it explained, it's no longer a mystery. Another thing I've learned is that there's levels of revelation. You know, my boss that I worked for for 14 years, he was a mason. And he said, oh, the masons worship God, the architect of the universe. That's what they call him, the architect of the universe. And he believed it was the same God that Christians believe in. And most masons believe the architect of the universe. Well, that's God, isn't it? But when you get higher up the levels you find that the architect of the universe is Lucifer. And Jesus is the imposter, and you've got to hate him. And all the symbols, when you get higher up, they say, oh yeah, those were for the novices. Those symbols, we explained them, but that's not the truth. Actually, this is what the symbols mean. And only a very, very few people in the whole world know the real 
symbolism, the answer, the mysteries of Masonic. Because it's the plan of Satan to take over the world and get worshipped as God. And, and all, all that's happening in the world, it, it's, I can't go into it. But there's levels. And what you think you know, when you get to a higher level, you realise, no, that's not the real meaning. I found that with God. Some of the things that I thought years ago, I wasn't wrong in the light I was in, but now I've got more revelation and I see a whole new world opening up of the same scripture. I thought I knew it, but that was the level I was at. And now the same scripture, I know worlds open up. There's levels. The greater includes the lesser. It doesn't mean you was wrong. It's just now you've got a, a, a deeper understanding. Maybe you won't understand what I'm talking about. I'll leave that with God. So the films that we watch are not just entertainment. They're the devil's parables and mysteries. And they have messages to the initiated. A lot of the films that have got messages, they, they show the Washington Monument. In the opening scenes, watch for them. They show the, the obelisk. That's a, that's a phallus. Um, and they show the Washington Monument, and the Masons know, oh, there's a message for us in this. Whenever you see that in a film, it's letting you know. Because it's Masonic, isn't it? There's a message there. Films like International and State of Play and all these, they, they, they're not just entertainment, they're telling you things, if only you have eyes to see. And the Masons know, the Witchcraft know, they know what the films are. Christians just watch them as entertainment, and it's going in. After the parables, many of them, and the lessons to the churches, Jesus said a strange thing. After the sower, he said, Who has ears to hear, let him hear. In Revelation, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. It's for our ears only. And our eyes only, for your eyes only. There's a title of a film, For Your Eyes Only. When, when you see that, there's a message in that film, for your eyes only. Those in the occult know, oh, the title tells me. Be, be careful what you watch. If you watch it, watch with discernment, not for entertainment. And so the majority will hear and see naturally, but they'll not hear and see spiritually. Whoever has ears to hear, ask God to open your eyes, ask God to open your ears. So when Jesus explained the parables to the disciples, they weren't a mystery anymore. And after you've watched this series, I trust that many of the parables that you thought you knew or you heard in Sunday school, I'm hoping it'll be revealed to you. Even if I've not got all the truth, I'm praying the Holy Ghost, as I go through the parables, will reveal to you the mysteries. They shouldn't be a mystery anymore when you finish this, this series. I would argue there's only one true interpretation. People say, oh, well, you can put many interpretations on a parable. Of course you can. That's why he did it in a parable. So people will put the wrong interpretation if they haven't got revelation. But Jesus was always speaking specifically about specific things. Some of the parables says, and he spoke this parable because they thought the kingdom of heaven would immediately appear. So it tells you why he told the parable. So, I think I've said enough. As I go through the parables, I'll endeavour to let the Word of God explain the Word of God. Never put your own spin on it. Never, I'm amazed at Christians, they read a, a scripture and they say, well, I think this is what God meant. And, well, I think this and I think that. You're not supposed to give your interpretation. Who's interested in what you think? Who's interested in what I think? How foolish. Well, I think this. Are you God? Read the Bible. Let the Bible, in let God interpret the Bible. Look at other scriptures that explain the verse. Don't, don't think about it. Our thinking is foolish to God. Let the Bible interpret. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to look at the context of the parable. I'm going to compare scripture with scripture. So hopefully we'll get some revelation. If I've not got the fullness, you'll get some revelation because I'm going to use the Bible to interpret the Bible. So I pray you'll be blessed and encouraged and have your eyes opened as by the Holy Ghost as we go through the series. I've finished.
God, I pray that you'll help us. I pray you'll help me as I go through the series, as I prepare these studies, that you'll give me revelation. You'll explain the mysteries to me so I can explain it to those who have ears to hear and those who have eyes to see. But I pray, Lord, that your Holy Ghost will already be preparing people who are going through the series to be open, to be willing to forget the traditions of the elders and, and get revelation from you. I ask it in your name. Amen. Well, God bless you, and I hope you'll tune in to these parables because I'm excited about doing it, and I want to excite you to listen to it. Have a wonderful week. God bless.